Warning, this podcast contains spoilers. What's up, everyone, and welcome to the... Oops, I cut the music. The <laughs> SCN TV podcast for American Horror Story Freak Show, Season 1, Episode 1, Monster... Or Season 4, Episode 1, Monsters Among Us. I'm your host, Dom. With me is my co-hosts, Mike. Hi. Rachel. Hello. And... Oh, my kids. How's it going? Good. Good. I feel like her. Why? <laughs> no. Does it have anything to do with Murder Clown? <laughs> His name's Twisty. Twisty the Clown. Twisty His the Clown. His name is Twisty. I don't know. Clown. Just how I about like Mur- creepy McCreeperton. No, fuck. I like Murder Clown. Come on. <laughs> His name is Twisty. So. Oh my God! It. Where did they get Twisty? He's twisted. Okay. Is he not? So I, the, before we go into the the whole episode, since we are, we're already on the subject of the clown. What is more frightening? Because that's kind of the comparison that's going around right now. Is it Stephen King's It? With Pennyworth? Or is it Pennywise? Twisty? Pennywise. Or is it Twisty the Clown? Two different. It's. I haven't read the book It, but the, you know, 1980s, 70s movie. He's not that I... scary. Ooh. I, I, yeah. He is. He There's, is, but he is. It's. It's like two different. It's like you know. It's two different time well, periods. Both creepy, and they both feel <clears throat> things. True. I mean, they're not that different. See, I've never actually been afraid of clowns, but I have always been a little creeped, occasionally. Mm-hmm. But it's not like some big fear. But uh, if I, if I was that chick on the, uh, the picnic blanket and i saw i would have been running to the no, fucking car that's what yeah beady eyes coming out of the bush i would have been gone and be like let's drive right now i am not in the mood for sex anymore let's go <laughs> yeah exactly yeah i would have <laughs> i am not you don't i am not horny away. anymore just get the hell out you of here you don't want to juggle yeah. i don't have anything to juggle i can't even juggle right now no no i have nothing to I can't juggle believe she just those juggling there. pins i though. wanted to i would have killed her too those juggling pins he's just like dead. Boom! Clock. He's now, I know swinging you could those say, things everywhere. You could say, "Oh, but it's 1952. Things were different." But no, fuck that. Even no, if it was no, 19, no, whatever. No. Uh-uh. The, Even, like, that whole smile and everything was that is really I creepy. Don't, it, it's you can't tell if that was uh, the part of the mask or part this of the part effort. right here of the mask where his eyes are is missing. The rest of it, he has. He has it's the weird. scalp part, and then he has the mouth part. He just doesn't have this. Yeah. Really or is it skin? Is oh, it like he's missing looks, so much skin that he's all that's like... That's why I said scalp. Uh, uh. <laughs> no, he like made a human, you know, the yeah. whole uh, gacy thing. <sighs> he was a clown. See, clowns are creepy. All right, all right, you win. Clowns are creepy. They um, are. They are, but I love them. I love clowns. Murder clown. Stab, 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 stab. Dude, I mean, why did she not? I just don't get it. He came out of the woods. He's dirty as hell. He looks like he just got done killing someone, and she's just standing there. Did you see the color of her hair? I hate to say it. I know, right? Mm. <laughs> so stereotypical. I'm glad that you said it and not me. So, um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, so this episode, from what I've seen on Facebook and uh social media is just in general is oh, it's overall been getting a very negative opinion right hmm. everybody's like oh this isn't as good as uh, coven and coven was kind of like this exception to the rule of all the american horror stories the all the other seasons besides coven were very different coven is like the um it's like that that time when it gets super popular like over popular to the point where you get all those hipsters coming in saying I was here from the beginning, and I was here when it was this, and you guys mm-hmm. just jumped on the bandwagon mm-hmm. now, and they're like, this is what American Horror Story is. So, like, the the big debate I've been seeing is is people are going, this is American Horror Story, it takes time to build up. Mm-hmm. I, I think people forget Coven had a very slow start, too. It did. Yeah. So, 
I, I don't understand why people are jumping the gun on this episode. This, this unfortunately, <clears throat> like, I, I, th- this is how every season of American Horror Story has been. Maybe season one was a little bit different because there was, like, a lot of weird stuff going on. You had no, no clue what to expect. Oh, and they were getting their foothold. It was their first season. Yeah. Yeah. They what they were going to do with their next couple seasons. Several. Maybe more than that. Seasons. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but overall, what did you guys think? Was this a good premiere, or was it sloppily executed? Did it Was it a letdown? It seemed really fragmented to me, because there's a lot of different cuts to different parts and different people, but mm-hmm. at the same time, they're trying to like jolt you into the story and you know get you familiar with these characters right from the start. Well, there was, it's like, was like, at first, well, like three three different stories, and then they just kind of all came yeah. together. Yeah, because at the very end, you know, they <clears throat> have Twisty, then they have the, the, the Siamese twins, and then they have mm-hmm. the actual, like, the circus, and they all kind of mm-hmm. meld to the end where, you know, you know, the Siamese twins are part of the act now. You see Twisty kind of watching them do their little, at the end, and mm-hmm. it's all one thing now. Yeah. So next episode will be smoother. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I thought it was good for a season premiere. I mean, I had no... I had less issues with it than uh, Omi did, so... Um. I didn't have any issues with it. The only thing that made me laugh was uh, her, like, what, Austrian, Austrian German accent. It cracked me up. I don't know why. Yeah, it's her German most, accent no, is... It was the most authentic that uh, any of them could pull off. Yeah. I mean, it there, there very, were some it times when sound, it was questionable. It sounded Aust- sound like Austrian. I mean, it's close to German, but it just sounded very, I don't yeah. know. It just There were some times when I, I brought it into question, but then I think it was somewhat by the end of the episode, I had accepted it, and it was like, okay, mm-hmm. that's, it's, it's fine. I, it's not even an issue for me. Mm-hmm. No. So. It's not a main thing, but it was just something that I was like, oh my god, this is hilarious. You can't, yeah. like, okay, you get a French person, and you bring them to an American... You know, they mm-hmm. eventually lose their accent a little bit. Right. So they start Americanizing their accent. So it, it that's probably why it doesn't exactly sound off, like completely I mean, authentic. I mean, we've seen this in other shows too, oh, right? Exactly. Like uh, I know, I know Phil and Phil or Mike over there and uh, Rachel. They cover uh, Agents of Shield, which is another podcast. If you guys aren't familiar <laughs> with it, go check it out. And the <laughs> two two characters, uh, Fitz and Simmons, they have a very over Americanized accent. It's not mm-hmm. a true what is it British accent that they're supposed to be doing. He's Scottish. She's British. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's over Americanized. So in a lot of American TV, unfortunately, that's what happens. So you can't really look at it as being super authentic. Yeah. No. So. I just I just thought of it as it's another it's a quirk of the actual show. That's why it kind of blended. It's just one of those things of. That, it just goes with the show, yeah. you know? Yep. Yeah. Um, all right, so I guess it, it's very hard to talk about the plot points and, and whatnot in here because there, there are a few, but altogether, the, the premiere was about the freaks. It's about the individual characters that we met. So I figured the best thing to do than really go over speculating stuff that we really don't know what's going on yet is to really just lay into these characters. Um so yeah. the first freak that we're really introduced to is um, Betty and Dot Tatler, which is the two-headed Siamese sisters as they're billed in the, the show mm-hmm. or whatever. Um, w- what did you guys think of them? Very, I would say very typical of what people would think. They're you know, two opposite personalities in one body. I actually just watched the Yeah, documentary. I was going to mention this documentary <laughs> she watched because I caught it like was... five minutes of it. About the, you know, um, the Siamese twins that are like, I don't know how old they are now. I don't remember when this documentary was filmed, but Brittany and Abby. Oh, yeah. And it's basically complete, completely the description of those two put into this show. But they took a little creative thing because I doubt that these two real girls have psychic connection with each other. Yeah. The the psychic connection was an interesting twist, though. They kind of, kind of lean towards that because they do finish their own sentence they have perfect symmetry when it comes to like cutting an apple or you know Mm -hmm. things like that typing they can you know one has left side the other has right side but they can type are they complete they can join the same way or is it yes exactly oh wow physically it's pretty much exactly the same way yeah Yeah. um did it come down to like the lungs do they each did they go into four lungs they have four lungs they have Hmm. um three kidneys they have 
you know, they share um, the reproductive system, system. They, and all that. They share all of that. Well, they have, <laughs> yeah, they have separate nervous and circulatory systems above a certain point, but then they like join together once yep. you start getting lower. That's actually pretty cool. Yeah, yeah it's. Uh, and, they, and they drive a car. They drive a car too. My yeah, they concern, drive. Yeah, they drive together, hmm. perfectly. Whatever. But um, my concern was, are they aware that this is happening? Do they? Are they okay with it? Because you know, it is, you know, kind of a copy of them. Yeah. Maybe a little bit. Like I would be a little. I would feel a little violated if I were them. I don't know. That's that. But that's me. I don't know how they're dealing with it themselves. Right. Interesting. Um, are they oh. the Are they the only case of this that's known? Did, did, was that mentioned in the documentary? Or yeah, I think only they're, the, they're unique to the actual build of how it's done because okay. um, I believe all others that were born like that either were stunted in some other way, passed mm. after only a few months of life, or had other. Uh, you know, developmental disabilities like, you know, Down syndrome or something. The, but these two girls are 100% mentally there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's interesting. And they play baseball mm -hmm. and all these other active sports and hike and they do all these things. It's crazy. Yep. They jog on treadmills and stuff. Um, I don't know. I think they're capable. <laughs> they're very capable. If they can play baseball and, you know, yeah. coordinate hitting... They're a ball with a bat together. It's two people, two personalities trapped in one body that's, mm -hmm. without that's being crazy. crazy or needing medication. Hmm. So yeah. Yeah, outside of whether or not uh, they're going to run into some issues with that, maybe they got their permission, you know, to use the likeness or I, I don't really know. Have, I don't know how they oh, yeah. Who knows how they went with that. But, uh, but as far as the characters go, um, having one that's really like, Grumpy, kind of like grumpy and serious, assertive, ass aggressive kind she, of. She seemed like, like naive, a southern, a southern church-going woman, you know, by Not God's war. That's Not how she was. Uh, that's you know when she was like, that's for you know, that's for harlots or whatnot. She that's something that <laughs> that's more that's or less harlots. the time period. Well, yeah, that, that's very but, well, from the south, so you know, being that they're complete opposite personalities adds to the character. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, but and I, but then you see them come together when they're when they meet. Uh, I obstacle. really I really like the fact that they were hidden from society. They were like this big secret, um, and then they're kind of forced back into the real world here, and then dragged you know to the this freak show, this carnival, circus, whatever this thing is. Mm -hmm. um, and what is it? It's uh, Fraudline Elsa's Cabinet of Curiosities. I think is what they called it. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, so it just it's really cool, but we know that they've also had this this past of what do they say, um uh Alabama? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they lived in Alabama and I'm guessing that the public found out about them. Mm -hmm. And they're the leaders of the was, dead and night. We're talking south and this was probably in the forties. Yeah. Uh you know, Bible belt area in that era. I mean Mm-hmm. <sighs> oh. Right. Yeah, so I'm sure we will see that in a flashback. I'm positive about yeah, that. Probably. They wouldn't have mentioned it if we if they weren't going to talk about yeah. it ever again. So, um, then there there was another uh, actual human oddity, which is uh, jo Joyetti Amagi. I, I can't pronounce that name. I'm really sorry. I'm butchering that name really bad. Joyetti I'm, um, I'm sorry. I I mean I'm she's Indian. Joyetti Amagi. I don't know. Um, the world's smallest living human. The actress, there's no CGI there. That is yeah, all her. That's her. her. Two feet, <clears throat> six inches, weighs 11 pounds, and is 20 years old. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, I saw, you know, come, leading up to the premiere of the show, I saw pictures of her, and I was like, no way. And I yeah. read, and then I I just read an article her, and I was like, her. oh, it's... my goodness, this is so amazing. And then I heard her voice, and I was like, I love her so much. <laughs> there's an article written about her, um... I forget where I read it this morning. She um it's always been her dream to be an actri actress yeah. and so she's been in two she's other things before that. this. One was more of like a game show type thing and then one was a documentary. So this is her first actual acting. Yeah. I'm so happy position. for her. Yeah, it's it's so amazing. Happy. 
Yeah. So I, think I mean, you, know, you want to say, like, oh my God, she's adorable, but she's 20 years old. Yeah, right. Exactly. And she, she that, in the so interview much. they did with her, she hates that. She said she hates yeah, people picking too. her up like she's a kid and, yeah. you know, all kinds of stuff like that. But, you know. Well, yeah. she had to deal with it during the show. No, she, she said she'll let people do it, you know, when it's necessary or whatever. But, she, you know, just random people. She's like, oh, my God, can I pick you up? Yeah. Yeah, well, random the, people. That no. just be kind of weird. Well, look, she looks like a kid. She, yeah. I mean, she's a, she's it's a little hard. difficult to understand. Um, mm-hmm. You know, yeah. but uh, that's that's no fault to the show or anything like that. that. That's just that's how she is, and you got to accept that. And I love the fact that they didn't alter that. Mm-hmm. You know, so they they left her as she is intact. I thought that they really did that justice. I I was super happy with that. Yep. Yeah. Um. Curious to see what direction they're gonna go with uh, with her, and uh, how much of her is actually gonna be involved to the centric plot, but. You know, I time will I don't time. know if you guys saw the clip for next week. Uh, Something not very nice. No, the clips were all this season. I think those in were clips season, from yeah, all of the I don't episodes know, coming but up. I was like, no! Hmm. And things we can talk about when it comes up, I guess. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, then we had Jimmy Darling, which is billed as the Lobster Boy, or as mm-hmm. Dane Cook would call him, the ultimate shocker. Oh, wait, I'm sorry, that's the Spocker. <laughs> My bad. Yeah, and I did kind of mention love... that in a different, uh, different words to mm. Mike earlier. So, yeah, don't you just love the way it makes extra money? <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Those housewives in the fifties, man. Oh God! You, you know he has the same business right now. Yes, he would. Don't act he like really, it's only the fifties. <laughs> he really would. <laughs> he really would. But the, the the housewives would be less shy about it. They'd be yes, up front yes. and be like, this is "Yeah, true. it'd um, be a lot more accepting now." Mm-hmm. No, yes, yes, they would be. He'd probably be married by now. Probably, <laughs> I can almost guarantee it. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's like, "Oh God, <laughs> where is <laughs> gone?" You usually get those guys that are worried about the their women having playing toys, or, you know, whatever. He's two in one. He's they're, they're built in. Yeah. So. Well, what if he's not around? <laughs> Just make a cast of his hand or something. I don't know. Um, Has? <laughs> I don't know. With what? Clay? No. Uh, you can get the stuff from a certain... Like silicone. I know, but I mean, like... Why? Oh, boy. I knew this was going to get weird as soon as we talked about this guy. Nah. It's inevitable. Oh, it's hard not to. I mean, come on. That's the, I, I think, I know. point of, of that. In the show, I mean, come on. They didn't even, like, dance around or anything. They just had him going right up the street. It's American Horror Story. They don't do much dancing. Yeah, there's yeah. no dancing. You know, I, I will say that was the surprise, you know, the way his hands were. They're just basically two really long, huge-ass fingers. Because <laughs> when he's in the diner and he's wearing those mittens, like the leather mittens, I'm like, those are actually his hands. His hands are, you know, just, he's got thumbs and they're mittens. That's like, what I was thinking. So like the penguin from Batman Returns. Sure. So. No. Nothing but, you know, mittens. But no, he turned oh. out to be not mittens. Yep. Uh, then we get his mother, Ethel, um, who I instantly think of. I love Lucy, Fred and Ethel. Um, <laughs> Ethel Darling, uh, who basically is Fred and Ethel merged into one. Um, Kathy Bates. Kathy that's Bates. Like. Yeah. I, I want, She's is the it, bearded lady. Is real mom? That's, or, and that's then his if mom. it is his, yeah. that's his real mom. That he's I like, didn't catch that when I was watching the show. I guess I was like focusing either. on other things. That's yeah, his mom, on, and because yeah, mm. they said it. Yeah, which brings up the point <laughs> that we did, haven't yeah. met the father. We will be yeah. meeting the father. We know this. Um, and it, it's Ooh. curious if he is also a human oddity. Yeah, Ooh. because who would carry the gene? I mean, I would think that was would be a gene mutation mm. it's not it has to do with development in the womb okay yeah his that fingers kind of... didn't separate no. uh, uh, what a <laughs> strange feeling we're talking about multiple generational incest here because mm. that is actually a side effect of that yeah stuff not separating i don't know um but as we talked about we had twisty the clown um, uh, but, uh, no, murder clown. We got Fuck to see it. him. Murder clown. He murdered Sheesh. what three people, right? We saw on air murder of three people. But he also kidnapped two children, and he's keeping them in an abandoned 
school bus in the woods that has this nice cage fastened to it, and he's literally freaking them out. Okay, yeah. the, well, the technically was he, killed, he killed those two people on the, pic, the picnic bin, picnic, that girl and then he killed, the and then he, is, the, is she in the cage? Was that her? That's the girl yeah. in the cage. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Yeah, it no. is. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. It's not Same a kid. Girl. It's the girl in the cage. He caught her and put her in the cage, and then the kid. He kidnapped it. I thought they said that there was another parents were murdered, yeah. and the kid was kidnapped. No, and the kid the was girl kidnapped. Was, I girl yeah, was that was the third murder. Okay, yeah, so he murdered the guy, and then kidnapped his, you know, girlfriend, who they were about to fuck at the picnic. So he kidnapped her, and then he killed the mother and father of that other little boy, and now he's got those two yeah, captured, I thought they, captive I thought in his van. on the radio that there was another parents were killed, and they ki the girl was kidnapped. There was a little girl kidnapped. That's what oh, I thought I heard, too, and that's why I thought yeah. the girl on the bus was different. I thought... Yeah, that's she what I heard, too. the same to me, though. I thought she had different I color hair. I could have sworn because she did. If oh. that is, then they, well, she she's killed, in a dirty cage. Her hair got dirty, and she's blonde. Mm. True. Uh, but that's what I heard, too. So don't. Anyway, he's just performing for them and trying to entertain them, but yeah. he's freaking them out and it's pissing him off. For once, Rachel's on my side. He just wants Something, to make Something's wrong happy. with this podcast. I, I don't yeah. know. I, I don't he's know. doing his I job care. as a clown. He's trying to make people happy and bring them joy, but... Oh, yeah. He popped he's, the fucking animal balloon. He, he didn't was, mean to. He's, he's nervous. They're, they're scared of <laughs> him. He wants to I make them too. happy. Like, I feel sorry for him, but at the same time, I'm scared shitless. You know, I spent the whole episode <laughs> thinking that he was not part of the freak show, that he was just a separate serial killer he entity. He might be. He might be. Well, then at the end, he's just sitting there riding the merry-go-round, like, com in dead stillness. Like, mm. well, maybe he, he was completely separate, one. but be there just watching them because he heard about the twins and he decided, oh, well, you know, hey, there's a whole freak show over there. I'm going to go check them out. That's very I, true. I, I was I was thinking that maybe he was part of the freak show at one point, and they kicked him out. Could be. Well, that's very possible. Yeah. Could be. Maybe he's daddy. He could be. Yeah. He could be. Then you got some daddy issues. Could be Jimmy's father. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> then, though, then Jimmy would have daddy issues. Mm. Mm. But then he would have to fuck the bearded lady. It's Kathy Bates. Come on now. I don't care. That clown. I'm sorry. That, that, ugh. The clown is played by, um, I forget the actor's Superman. name, but he played um, Lee uh, Arthur, whatever his name is, from the Zodiac Killer movie. Wow. He, yeah. So he knows how to play a killer good. Oh, yeah. Well, he, oh. well, he, he played the guy that is the lead uh, suspect in the murder mm. in, in that movie. Uh, it was just called Zodiac, I believe. Um, I've heard of it, never seen it. Yeah, it's an, it's from the '90s, mid '90s, I think. Yeah. Mid to late '90s. Um, it was a really good movie, but uh, yeah, I, I I thought he was great in that role, so I'm really happy that he's getting to play the clown now because that's really cool. Um, mm -hmm. but then we also have Jessica Lange's character, uh, Elsa Mars. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she she's so eccentric. It's funny. She's kind of playing the same role, right? She's, she's this person that wants to be a star. Like, this is kind of like when it, the bare bones when it comes down to it. That's almost the same role she's played in all four seasons so far. What I get from her is the very sunset sunset drive. I'm ready for my closet, Mr. DeMille. I mean, very creepy, but very, eye, you know, the big old eye, eyes and the eyeshadow all the way up here, you know? And you're like, yeah. Yeah. But I mean, that's, that's over dramatized, and that actually, you know, becoming a star back then and doing all that kind of stuff is actually, you know, having the eccentric eyeshadow and makeup, making yourself look like you stand out. That's part of the whole movie industry becoming a thing then. Yeah, right. and you know, hers, well, <gasps> stars don't pay. And she walks yeah. out the door. <laughs> I'm like, oh my yeah. God, really can't today, that wouldn't fly. Those uh, waitresses would be on your ass. <laughs> Yeah, it's because it I comes know. out of their paycheck. So yeah, it's coming out of their ass. Yeah. Or whatever. They'd be on their ass. They'd be like, uh uh. Come on, right? yeah. Um, but then we learn at the the end of the episode, she's actually part of this freak show herself. Like we we think she's just this normal person, but she it, she lost her legs at some point. We don't know if this is a birth defect or if this is a a story plot. But if it 
it seems to be that she was not born this way. She's from. She's from Austria. Germany. She's from German area. Yeah, she's from German area Europe during you know this is 1952. It's Just seven after, years after World yeah. War II. It's very likely she lost them in a bombing or something during the war. Yeah, I'm sure we're gonna get an answer to that coming oh. up. It's going to have to happen. She's old enough to have lost them as in a as a kid in World War One even. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. So, and she might. The reason she might be still stick to the stars, she might have been a star before she lost her leg. She might have been like a kid actor or something. And yeah, it's extremely it's possible. And- but um, the one thing that I, I want to know, and I wish I was there for this, is I was curious if, if Mike, if I, American I, Horror I, Story was I, I trolling... I out to her. ...was trolling uh, Omi this, this whole time. The song that Jessica Lange sang is a David Bowie song. <laughs> see, I've said this before. As long as it's not in his voice and I don't see his face, I'm okay. But what she said was, she's sitting there, she, you know, starts singing it, and she's making goofy faces like, oh, what is like, you know, oh, I goosebumps. I, I, do, I do admit that. I she got did, crazy she ass got goosebumps, goosebumps right up her whole arm. Really? Did you yeah. know it was a David Bowie song when she was performing it? You did? You'd be surprised what I know about David Bowie. Okay. And it's because, I mean... I've been tortured because of my father my whole life. But the thing is, like, she said it <laughs> reminded her of watching the early auditions of American Idol. Mm-hmm. And it gave the same feeling. And you know what? Sitting there watching it, I'm like, I agree. I just, I, the whole, I feel embarrassed for them kind of thing. Because, you know, they, they think they're doing great, and then there's people belittling them in the corner, and I just, I don't like that feeling. I hate when people are hating on other people, even though they, these people are trying their hardest. Right. That, the, to the two people in the audience, I want to, I hope he, that kid, well, he's not a kid, but he might as well be one. Right. Stuck up little rich boy. Mm-hmm. Um, but... This brings to my attention that that track by David Bowie was not released until 1971, and as Mike has established, we're in 1952. So, <clears throat> either they're introducing some kind of time travel into this show, or <laughs> it's just they're not they're not it's they've done it in other shows where you know they take songs they sing and it's totally out of the time fr- time. I've had a number of shows. American other shows. Horror Story. I mean. You know, they're really good with attention to detail, usually. Right. I mean, you think they would have caught on to this. I think it's Maybe. intentional, myself. I, I think it's, that they, they are doing like that. Because, and, and Omi, you should know this better than anyone. David Bowie himself is a freak. And I think that that might be the direction that they're going for the soundtrack that they picked, is mm-hmm. people yeah. who identify or relate to being a, a freak and if, if that's the soundtrack that they're going with they're they're taking the year out of the music it's just yeah they're not in. they're not even well, i don't think they're caring about the year yeah hey if we see any five-year-old boys running around i just looked it up david bowie was five in 1952 mm. so but he wouldn't have the hair and I mean, the in clothes. That, that music video too, right? He's in a, a blue tux, he's got the <laughs> orange hair, he's got one eye that's dilated, one that's not. It's just like... Ziggy Stardust. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah. I don't know. I just... Oh, there is, it was very... Did you also notice though that the <laughs> they said that they sold out and their thing of selling out was two seats? I think that that rich... Pair just bought every ticket, so they yeah, were alone. Uh, because she's uh, like, what? He's, like, he's like, all the seats are mine, or she said, all the seats are yours. So mm-hmm. yeah, he they bought it out. Okay, see, I didn't catch that. So they bought the whole venue out, so they could be alone, and he would be the first per- person to witness this. Which then he he offered. He wanted to buy some uh, what the the Siamese and, sisters. I don't really. Why? They're, well, they're not. They're not. They're not prostitutes. They're no, not going to buy them. Well, you want to buy them? I think it was prostitute. Like no, no, that's what she said. They are, and they're like, no, we just like, want to buy them. They don't juggle. It's also we're buying people. We're ninety years after slavery. Um, I know they're buying people. Because yeah, five thousand dollars, ten thousand, fifteen. My final offer. What the fuck? Yeah. Now, 
Um, before I go into this this next part, because this this is gonna this is gonna get into some some crazy brain hurting nonsense. So you, everybody watching, you're gonna have to focus, pay attention here. Um, Hurt my brain. But so Mike and Omikins, you guys have are all caught up. You have watched all the shows so far, all the seasons of American Horror Story. Oh yeah. Now Rachel, you have not. This was your first season of American Horror Story, correct? I mean, okay. I've seen other like episodes, ones off episodes here and there, but no, I haven't okay, watched so the seasons. Okay, so this this particular part, <laughs> Rachel's probably not going to be able to weigh in too much on, but but this is really going to start hurting the brains of those people at home and and Mike and Nikki as well. We see a returning character from a previous season in this episode, and that is Pepper from the Asylum. Okay. The yeah. actress that plays Pepper does not look anything like that. So they intentionally put Pepper in this episode. Okay. Yeah. Um, there is a line. There's a line in American Horror Stories Asylum where Pepper says, Dr. Arden, you see me as a microphallic, whatever. Microcephalic. Microcephalic. When my sister's husband drowned her baby and sliced his ears off, he told everyone I did it. They tied me up and paraded me in front of the judge. He took one look at the shape of my head, and I was locked up for good. That's how it works for us freaks. We get blamed for everything. That's a direct quote from her in Asylum. Mm-hmm. Okay. So this character now has returned. It's already established previously that she was a freak. Now she's back. All right. The Asylum took place... I think about 10 years after Ooh. this timeline, right? So this is in the 50s. The, <clears throat> the asylum took place somewhere in the 60s, mm -hmm. um, maybe early 70s. I think it's late 60s, early 70s. So that starts going. Is American Horror Story actually all connected? Are all these seasons all connected? Mm -hmm. And I know this is kind of a popular theory that had been going around for a little while that these people died and were reincarnated and came back and all that stuff and they're living different lives and that's why you see like what was it uh the two the boy and the girl i forget the actress's names in season one are also lovers in season three and you're like oh is it are they their souls and everything all drawn i thought that that was always kind of a stretch but then you, you start thinking so this season takes place 10 years before asylum um We'll probably get some more of Pepper as this goes on, and, and it'll lead up to the point where we see her sister's husband doing these actions, cutting the ears off and, and stuff like that, just like they said in Asylum. Wow. But then then I really started thinking, we go back to last season, we had Madison. Madison's, you know, my, my future ex-wife, but besides <laughs> that, um, her last name was Madison Montgomery. Right? Um, she, sa she shared the same last name as the couple from Murder House that built and lived in the house in the 1920s. Mm. So they're the ones that kept the mutant child in the basement, you know? So there is a possibility that they're related, you know, some way, shape, or form. And then we know Emma Robert Roberts will be playing a fortune teller in this mm -hmm. season, which um, could display the power of telekinesis, which would genetically be handed down to Madison, tying it into her role in Coven, if if this is all related. It's a little bit of a stretch, but just just bear with me. Right. I can see I can see them doing little things to tie them together for people so to give people the fuel to think about these extravagant connections. Right. But I but, mean But then catch this. Then catch this. Oh. We have we have in Murder House the Harmons, the the family that moved in in the the present day. Yeah. They came from Boston, right? The asylum in Briarcliff is on the outskirts of Boston. The coven that the witches trace their lineage back to is the Salem house, you know Salem, which is right outside of Boston. And Vivian Harmon, the the wife, mentioned that her family was from Florida, and it just so happens that the freak show takes place in Jupiter, Florida. Oh right. God! So now it's really starting to mesh all these different families together. That these could be relatives, that not doppelgangers or anything. They could just be relatives, you know, that that are living around the same time. Um, and there was even something that was supposed to happen in the Coven um, season, and they said that they heavily considered making 
Bloody Face's son, at the very end of the episode, changed his name to Ben Harmon. And he was, uh, he was supposed to survive, which would have been the father of Murder House. That was that was their plan, was they were going to make Bloody Face into Ben Harmon, because it was the same actor, um, and have him survive and move into the Murder House and take that name or whatever. They didn't go with that route. But you could see even back then that they started thinking about connecting this. So, so the, it is vaguely connected. So mm-hmm. It's still, you know, four seasons of completely independent stories that you can just pick up and watch any season at a time. Correct. But there are connections. It, yeah, there's just embedded connections that give, you know, it allows, you know, excitement to brew in fans to say, oh, I am watching mm-hmm. from the very beginning and I see all these things coming together and this is one big huge story to me. Whereas people coming in, watching season by season, not really, you know, like Rachel just picking up this season. Wow. She <clears throat> wouldn't catch any of this stuff, but no. it doesn't matter. It's still its own story. I mean, you guys you know don't catch any of it either, but now Mike, That's, I told you, his brain's yeah, going to start Oh my hurting. God. That's why I'm watching this episode and I see, you know, two of the freaks, you know, the ones while Jessica Lange is singing, you know, they're moving the water and everything. That's where I recognize her from. It was Pepper. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They looked exactly like her. Oh yeah. my fucking God. Okay. Thank you. Hurt my brain. Messed yeah. my hair. I'm good. So I'm sure that a lot of these other connections are hidden within the show. So what? those of you that are watching, make sure to post them down below in the comments. We'll go into them as you guys find them. If we miss them, post, point them out to us. We'll catch up on the next podcast. We'll let you guys know. Let everybody know. We'll give you guys credit for it, too. Um, but, yeah, there's. it seems like this. there is an over-connecting kind of universe here going on. So this and the fact that Pepper's here, it just it really... And I, I did some research as well, and they said um, is that Pepper? that is, in fact, Pepper. So it is, is Pepper. That? Yes, that's like, the name that she's going to go by on the show and everything. So... Wow. Okay. Yeah. And you know what? Now that makes me even more excited for the season because they might throw more of that stuff at us mm-hmm. and just completely just, you know, our little bouquet of like six flowers is now going to be like a f- 24. Yeah. Like it's just going to expand. And I mean, it's stuff like you said, it's not this. pertinent to the, the thing. It's not going to revolutionize the whole episode. But for people that watched it, yeah. It, does that mean that... Rachel's not going to have any clue what's going on. No, she's going to understand it. She's going to love everything that happens this season. But if we didn't mention the connection to Asylum, she's not going to know the potential that Pepper could get framed for this thing. And that's how... So we, we're we very safe to say Pepper's not dying this season. We can say that uh, from the, the clip that they showed us at the end of this episode, showing us what is going to happen, shit's going to go down. And I think Pepper's going to have something happen to her, and it might be this whole framing She's thing. She's going to get so, locked up and go to the asylum. It's going to happen. There you go. It's going to happen. But I'm curious on how she gets from Florida to Massachusetts, and I'm sure they're going to explain that. Yeah, I'm uh, pretty sure they yeah. will. But, yeah, do you guys have uh, anything else that you would like to add in? How about the killing of the cop? Oh, yes. That Good. didn't oh, matter. Oh, yeah. Oh, come on. The cop. <laughs> He was, he was a douchebag. He was. I, you know, he's a typical um, authority figure in the South in the 50s. Mm-hmm. He's going to be a douchebag to anybody who's not a white Christian American. Well, I knew someone's gonna, someone was going to kill him right then and there. As soon as he started, yeah. like, prancing also, his shit, you know. He, he was quick with that knife, man. Mm. I just saw him pull it out of his pocket, but then when he did it, it was just like... Whoosh. Well, like can you imagine food. the shit that they've had to put up with all uh, their lives? Okay. I'm pretty sure they got quick with a lot of things. Just and to save Did them. you notice that none of them were surprised that someone just got murdered in front of well, them? Well, if you would have, like, look, saw the clips that um, Elsa was watching, they do some crazy shit anyways. So, of course, nothing's going to be a surprise because... I don't know. Maybe they've done it before. Yeah. I mean, uh, that, that's kind of what solidified uh, uh, Betty and Dot to stay there, is too, mm-hmm. is because... Oh, yeah. Um, they, people's got their back. They, protect, they protected them. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's because it's Jimmy had uh, really stood up for them, and this is the first time somebody mm-hmm. stood up for them. Even their own mother didn't stand up for them, right? The, mm-hmm. that's, that's why, why their mother got, got murdered, you know? Mm-hmm. Dot yeah. ended up stabbing her because, like... 
She wanted to go see a movie. Yeah, she wouldn't stick up for her. She wanted to hide her. And and that's not what these guys... These guys want to put them... On, put uh, the twins on display. Show them to the world. You know, give yeah. them the life that they, they want. They deserve. Because they're beautiful people. And they need to be heard and seen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, oh my gosh, that video she was watching. It was hard to see exactly what was going on. Cause the, you didn't, you didn't need to know what was going on. No. It was poppy and it was going fast and it was. I mean, yeah, you had like, the the candy striper from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Like she's now part of this freak show and she wants to leave and rat out every everything that happened. It, she and can't. She can't because they have all this video footage of her and, loving and it. It's not even that. She kind of is like, I did love it. Yeah. Oh. She, she was a little. She's uh, fighting with herself. She's torn. She's in the beginning <sighs> stages of uh, that whole brainwash uh, yeah. syndrome yep. that I can't think of the name for right now. I'm, I'm sure the syndrome. little. I'm yeah. sure the little doping. That, you know, oh yeah. That yeah. come on. Anyway, next episode is called Massacres and Matinees. Uh, a citywide curfew threatens to shut down the freak show. A strong man from Ethel's troubled past arrives at camp. So strong man from Ethel's past, which is Jimmy's mother, could mean Jimmy's father is the strong man. All right. Mm -hmm. Ethel's troubled past. Never know. Yeah, it's the troubled past. It's leaning, it's leaning that way for me. For you. It's um, possible. Gloria arranges a terrifying play date for Dandy. I, I don't even know Dan who Gloria Dandy's is. Dandy's the rich fuck. I don't know who Gloria is. Gloria's Gloria Gloria his mom. Okay. Yeah. Oh, Gloria's his mom. Okay. I remember at the end, she goes, look, you've always wanted a clown. <sighs> oh. Wrong fucking clown. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Spoilers for next episode. You, bad. <laughs> and I saw the thing clown. afterwards. No, it was in, it was in no, the preview. It, it was, was in the preview. preview. They showed them. It was in the some preview, people, huh? Sometimes people don't watch the previews. We, I warned just them, that we warned them at the beginning of the show that there's going to be spoilers. I want that little fuck to get scissors stabbed through his face by a clown. And was finally, it scissors he used or was it something else? And finally, the Tatler twins reveal a talent that could knock Elsa from the spotlight. Oh, that's not going to be good. Oh, See, oh that... She's not going to like it. Uh, but it, it's not Bet that has the no, talent. It's, it's Dot. It's, it's, the, it's the stuck up one. That's Bet. Bet's the stuck up one. Uh, Dot's whatever. the nice Dot. one. I've been a bad, bad girl. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, I think that about wraps the show up. Uh, that's going to be good. Um, Mike, where can people find you? At that magically appearing box of text. On Twitter. <laughs> at Philodrin. Right there. Excellent. It's hiding my mouth. Uh, Rachel, where can they even find you? They find me on Twitter at Savannah17. Uh, bad, bad girl, where can the people find you? They can find me at on Twitter at LadyVenom24. L A D Y V E N O M 24. You can also find me down below at Phenomenon, P H E N O M E D O M. Gracie, you can start singing now. Come on, Gracie. We want to hear you sing. Da, 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 da. Chrissy's not here. She was on the show before me. Da, 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 da. Oh, no, she is here. She's in chat. Oh. You can also find us on Twitter, Facebook, Gmail, G, and right here on YouTube at ASO TV Podcast for some more podcasts for some of your favorite TV shows. Um, make sure to catch us tomorrow night for the original season premiere and the second episode of The Vampire Diaries. And if you don't follow us, Mondays we do Gotham, or no, Mondays we do Doctor Who, uh, The Once Walking Dead, and Once Upon a Time. Mm. Wednesdays is Gotham, uh, usually originals, and some other shows. Something else. Check our schedules, it'll yeah. be there. Go on our main page, YouTube, and uh, you'll see our list of schedules. Make sure to set a reminder uh, so you know when when our podcasts are airing. And, if you want to uh, join us live and chat to us, which you are more than welcome to. We love yeah. it. We Leave love us it. some comments below, and uh, we will answer them next week. Until then, see you later. Bye. See you later, guys. Avoid really creepy clowns. Clowns are bad, okay?
Not all clowns. Just mm. that one. Clowns are bad, right? 